worked with, uh, I worked with you for many years. Amen. We started from the beginning with the Texas Announcers Guild, and you were the founder, one of the founders, and of course you were the vice president, all of that, of the Texas Announcers Guild. Uh, and then, of course, later you moved on into founding the Texas Gospel Music Excellence Awards. And you've been doing that for 21 years. Amen. It's coming up, y'all, and next month. He's going to share a little bit of that with us about the Texas Music uh, Award. But in these 21 years, uh, you've given away thousands of awards. I've seen you give a lot of awards away in 21 years to deserving gospel artists. Can you tell us uh, what inspired you, first of all, to do this, Pastor Davies? God. Okay. <laughs> God showed me Mike. that there was a need to to assist and help independent gospel artists, do gospel artists. They didn't know which way to go. Independent artists were lost, especially in Texas. And it started out to be just Texas artists. And several several years later, we opened up to the national. So we, we you know we try to inspire state and national artists to be all they can be. And thank God for a good wife that saw the vision and we co-founded watch out Johnny <laughs> and co-founded the Texas Gospel Music Excellence Awards and it has been a it has been a pleasure it has been an awesome pleasure to see this the expressions on the faces of the people that receive awards because we honor the uh, new artists and the independent artists from around the country. And they come from everywhere. Matter of fact, I get more support from out of state, make sure that everybody hear that, than in state. <laughs> and that's not good. But I understand the, the words of the prophet, not, okay, but anyway. Uh, Amen. But they come from choirs from New York, Atlanta, like this year. We have, they, and they call it me. They want to be here. And I'm enjoying it. Amen. We have over 277 rooms as of today at the Marriott. A record. Because they want to be somewhere where they can get some help. Through GMWA. Amen. Through GMWA, I'll make sure you understand this. When when Dennis was talking, this model was established. Through GMWA. That inspired us, me and Sharon, to do this. And we love it. We love we love helping the artists. Some of them don't want no help. That's why you right, sir. Big lows. <laughs> Big Lopes. Big Lopes. I thank God for Big Lopes. <laughs> yeah. That's all they're gonna be. Because they don't wanna they don't wanna go any further. They, they don't wanna they don't wanna pay the dues. You got to pay your dues. Amen. Every artist has to pay your dues. Amen. Amen. But I mean by that, you gotta start somewhere. Amen. You gotta spend some money to travel to do beyond what you've been doing. Because what you've been doing is not working. So you need to get with somebody that's going to help you. The Texas Gospel Music Excellence Awards will help you. GMWA will help you. That's why we're here. The, the entities are here. We're here to help the independent artists. And if they can help them get that, wow, they're going places. We, Kim Morrell started out with us. Say it. James Fortune started out with us. Say it. 21 years ago. Started through this entity. And it was said, Herman Burroughs, they had a big record coming back in the day, says through the Texas Gospel Music Actors Awards, you will have some people that are going to receive Stellas, Kim Burrell, mm -hmm. and Stellar nominations. Endurance. Yes. They started with us 21 years ago. Yes. Amen. Yes, I mean, proof is in the pudding. Oh, yeah. Listen, when you, uh, 
we have this problem with our, our artists and then our, our new artists especially that okay with the texas music excellence awards uh there are registration fees yes it is there are registration fees and and uh i know even uh new focus just a while back they they, they had this big concert they had groups from a little of everywhere. It was a really good concert. And somebody got on Facebook and said, they were advertising. But I just want to know why do the church, if you go, you can't go to church now without having to pay. And so why would we have to pay? Uh, can you explain that a little bit? Why we have the registration fees and we have to pay? Because I have to pay. Let's <laughs> <laughs> play it. Ministry costs is not free. You, have you ever walked in your church and the lights was off? That yeah. comes from what? Your tithe and your offering. Amen. So every every entity has to pay. We we talk we call it the Excellence Awards. We have a four star hotel that we use for the last seven years. We've been at the Marriott. Awesome relationship, and they have kept the rates down to get our business. Go anywhere and tell me where you can pay $86 a night in a four-star hotel. The normal race is $225. When you come to the Texas Exodus Award, $86. It started out at $79. And a dollar a year. They've gone up. One dollar. That's what they promised me. They've been good to the Texas gospel music, Exodus Award, because they want your business. It's a business thing, and it costs to do business. So yeah, you pay registration because it costs us. Yes. So you help us pay the bill. Yes. <laughs> Do we hear that? Amen. You want to know why you have to pay for gospel? Amen. Gospel's not free. No. The whole t nothing is free. We have to pay just like the others have to pay. Amen. Amen. And I have one more question for you. Uh, also, as uh, gospel artists and traveling and singing. And uh, a lot of times we, you know, we're doing the showcases. Uh, well, most don't do the showcases. They don't want to do the showcases because uh, they don't want to do, you know, the ten minutes or whatever. Uh, but for those that the reason we do the, the ten minutes, the seven minutes, or whatever showcases, can you kind of explain to us why, as as on your music awards and other conventions, the national convention? Because see, I told them a long time ago. A lot of them didn't listen to me, but I said, you know, you need to cut it because when you go to the big conventions, excuse me, and all of that, excuse me, y'all, when you go to those conventions and all of that, you're going to do the seven minutes. You're going to do the, the, the four minutes sometimes. So we just need you to, to tell us uh, why we're doing these ten minutes and these seven minutes. You just explained it. Amen. <laughs> because when you do go to the national it's 10 minutes, 9 minutes, 8 minutes, 7 minutes. And you're going to do that or they'll get you off the stage. Because you have hundreds of artists who you're running across the stage. Everybody's trying to get exposure. It's about exposure. If you can't do, when you get up in the, your first two minutes, we know whether you, anyway. We do 10 minutes at the Texas Gospel Music Exits Awards in your time. When you go to GMW, 8 minutes, I think it's what, 8 minutes? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. We prepare you for the national. If you go to Bobby Jones, it's, it's sure less than 10 minutes. Right. So we prepare you for that. It's about education. Try to condition your mind. You know, because if you cut a CD, your songs is what, Drake, on a, on a CD? <coughs> I say, uh, well, I was told that to get proper radio play or whatever like this should be at least uh, 4, 15 or less. Thank you. So you can't do two songs, it should be nine minutes, and you should be going off the stage. So we train you for that. That's what it's all about. Condition. We learn in our workshops and so forth uh, about how you have to, you can't get up there and preach, and you can't get up there with a long introduction, and you can't, you have to, you got 10 minutes. So some don't understand, uh, they have a 10 minute track, for example. And so you don't understand when you maybe eight minutes and you get cut off. Well, wait a minute, this track is 10 minutes. 
You know, so why am I getting cut off in eight minutes? Because you done talked up your two or three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you talked them up. And so you only have, and they're going to be, we have timekeepers in all of these conventions. And so if you're going to, like, where's the baby? She had a, where your, uh, you know, I don't know the name, I can't think of it. Yeah, where was the uh, sign the that you had earlier? You're going to get this, this. Turn it around, let them see. Hey, you you gonna get first of all she I think she has one three five yeah and then what is that red one and that's what they need for you to get off the stage and if you don't get off the stage past the what will happen? Cut the sound. They will cut the sound off. Amen. So why why would we want to be embarrassed? You know why would we want to go through this when we just want to be trained to do it the right way? So if you already know what you got to do. That's why we're here. You already know that you don't have a 10 minutes. So when that sign go up, it means your 10 minutes is up. So it's no use of you saying, well, you know, I, the Holy Spirit is moving there. I got to say. <laughs> Amen. You got to do all of that in 10 minutes. So if you get all carried away and you got to say, you better go on outside and do it. Amen. Amen. Get real happy. Nobody's going to bother you. <laughs> and go and everybody know. They should know that God is good. How many people know God is good? <laughs> so we should have to testify when we get up on the stage. That's not testimony time. It's saying time. Thank you. We already know this in advance, so we know to do it. Do it if I have any questions for Pastor Davies. I, I want to throw a point out. Uh, this is Sister Sharon Davies. <laughs> you, you have 10 minutes to, to do what... You have 10 minutes to do what you, you, okay. you have 10 minutes to do yes, what you're going to do to minister. But let's just say that first song that you sing, uh, the, the Holy Ghost comes in and, and, and the spirit is high. Should you go to that second song or what should you do? Shut it down. That's it. That's a good question. Is there something anybody can answer? Anybody. Because I would love to answer that. Come on. The difference between being local and being professional is also being knowledgeable about your Holy, the Holy Ghost and your anointing. Come on, come on, Trent. You can practice for a five-minute set, but if God comes in and destroys the place in the first minute, you got to roll with the conscience. Come on, Joe. That's it. Bang, boy, sing. Come on now. That's ministers, singers. If it, it might change. You might can't do what you rehearse. You, 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 it just might not happen. You got to know how to roll with it. If God come in while you say, do it right now, do it, you better roll with it. And check this out. Check this out. God is going to be glorified whether you believe it or not. And while you're doing it right now, somebody's going to be blessed. Somebody's going to sow into your ministry for that do it right now and before you even get to fixing Jesus. <laughs> Just because you rolled with the anointing and the power when it came in, you was doing it right now. We're like, man, we got to still fix Jesus, though. We can't do it. We can't fix Jesus today. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yes, 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 so that's the difference. And that's the thing that makes me sick to my stomach about a bunch of artists that should be here now. Right. Is that you know too much too fast. That's it. That's it. That's it. Right there. You got to know how to roll with the punches. Every man, you're not going to. I done seen the brothers coming up. The Williams brothers being on the Cloud show, they would put the brothers up at the end of the show. They was in their prime. They would put them up at the end of the show and all the 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes that everybody else got, they got shut down quick like the 10 minutes. But you had to come out there and all, and, and at that time, uh, Melvin, I, he's like, my God, daddy, he would tell me. They would do us like that all the time. he said, say, I, sometimes I don't even understand why they would do it. Like, and then sometimes, Believe it or not, we all profess God, but some of us hate us on the cool. Uh -huh. So you're going to have to understand, says the Harris tell you, your family. Look, y'all got to understand that everybody that's smiling in your face right here in your town will shut you down on purpose. They used to pull the plugs on some groups. If you was in that house too bad, they'll pull the plug on you and shut you down. 
Everybody ain't gonna be playing. But what I'm saying is this: they would pick. Melvin told me we knew what would happen. He said if you get hit in your head too much, if you're walking through that door and you forget to duck because you're too tall and you're gonna hit the the top of the door or the top of the the roof or whatever, eventually you're gonna understand that you start swooping down when you get ready to walk through there. Daddy said, if you get your head busted white meat enough, you're going to learn. <laughs> so what he said, what we had to start doing is we had to pick the hits. We had to pick the songs that we knew that the radio stations were playing, mm -hmm. that the people were enjoying. They didn't have Facebook and social media back then. Yes, yes, but it was the radio stations was high and, and everything. He said, we would pick. And at that time, he knew that they had a hit. One of their first hits was called Jesus Will Fix It. Jesus would fix it was it that was not that was before I'm just a nobody and all that stuff. Jesus would fix it was the first hit that the William Brothers ever recorded back in 1973. And every time they hit it back then, it was a house, you know. He said we would say that for last. And we would come up on uh, he said we'll come up on something like uh, just like he said, just like he said he would. That was a good one for him. Yeah. He said we will only have minutes for time for two songs. After 14 groups and some. <laughs> he said we weren't worried about getting in the house. We weren't worried about nothing. All we wanted to do was make an impression. First of all, glorify God and make an impression. And he used those two songs to make an impression for 60 years. Those guys been soaring. Say that all I have to say this. And I ain't gonna say nothing else after this. Because I don't know how many groups here. I don't know how many. There's one. Matter of fact, how many here involved in either preaching or singing that's in this building right now? Raise your hand. Actually, just more than. Okay. Now, I'm going to put it like this. In this area, and I'm just going to tell you how I see it. Between my brother right here, between the Willis family, and uh, y'all, and, and, and Unity, I've seen more exposure with these three on social media. Okay, so Brother Dennis said, social media is just where it's at. It's a different world now. Yes, 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 yes. And it's better because most time it's free. But I've seen more about y'all on social media just scrub. I'm on a plane, I'm in the hotel room, and I'm just looking at Facebook or whatever, and I'm seeing yeah, yeah. a lot with yeah. these groups from this area. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying like this, this is where it comes from, and I'm done. <laughs> if, if any inspiring artist in this area want to know what it takes, look at them. Ask them what they're doing. I done seen y'all in New York here, and I done seen them at the GMWA. They win and stuff. I done seen the Willis family in Atlanta, the GMWA. People are noticing. Look, y'all keep saying, singing that song. If you never sang another song, y'all make sure y'all do that song y'all did today. Because the world loves that song. Yes. They know y'all for that yes, song. Amen. Yes, amen. Trust me, it might get yes. weary sometimes. Y'all might be getting like, uh, we gonna sing that again. Yes. Trust me, it's gonna make room for you in a minute. Yes. I promise you that. Yes. But I'm telling y'all, look, I know all, I love all y'all, for real. But it's time for things to change. Yes. We can't keep coming here, sitting behind these tables to people who really don't want to do what it takes to do. It. You know what I'm saying? It. It's time out for that. It's a waste of time. Right. It's time to see more than just the leaders in here. I need to see your whole group. Yes. I need to see your whole choir. Your, I'm telling you, I see even in the conferences that the preachers are doing, that T.D. Jakes is doing and everything. It's more than just the pastors coming out. Pastors got to bring their crew now. Because yeah. 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 it takes more than the pastor to make it work. Yes, it does. Right. It yes. takes more than y'all to make yes. it work. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Got to have some know-how. It's time out for this stuff. If yes. we want to grow and be more successful, it's time for us to go to GMWA, spend your coins, yes. go there and learn. Go to uh, Pat, Pastor David. You don't even remember. You probably don't remember. But see, I even came out from under you with my family group, God's chosen family, the Tate family. Yeah, you did. Exactly. <laughs> so where I am came from 
learning stuff from this man. Amen. And he probably don't even remember. But I am a, I am uh, uh, I am, I come from him. That's straight up. I come from him. My daddy used to tell, look, we got to go, uh, Davis, Dave, we got to go sing for him. And sometimes it'd be only five people up in there. But look where I am now. We would get up in the morning, go to KCOH, five o'clock in the morning, and sing live on the radio station. But look where God has blessed me to be now. I didn't understand it then, y'all. I get it now. Amen. Thank you, Brother Andrea. Amen. In fact, you answer all of your questions, and at the point, you answered them all. Amen. And you, you talked a little bit, I heard, and I, that was one of the things I wanted you to speak on was like uh, the right song selection, and you spoke on that. It, it, we have to choose the right song selection. And a lot of times, we can't choose what we like. I know Cheryl, for example, we use up an example. They, she wrote a lot of songs, y'all, and they're good. I don't hear them now, but they're good. But, uh, and they used to go places, even with the twins and the friends, and the, uh, and people love certain songs, like they love those certain songs. And we would go, and we was tired of singing those, you know, and they'd get up there and do something different. People requested songs. We want to hear sold out. And they wanted to do something else. So they would get up there and they'd do something else, and then people sit up there looking at them funny. You know, and then they're wondering why. Because you didn't say what they wanted to hear. You've got to do it. I don't care if you have to do it every time you sing. If they request it, do it. Because that's what the people want to hear. That's what they want to hear. Amen. They want to hear the baby sing. Don't stop them from singing. Like Andre said, let them sing. sing. That's going to make room for all y'all. Going to make room, yeah. So I just want to uh, do that because I've been in this a long time and I know that sometimes, you know, you get tired of singing those songs. But if people love those songs, do them for the people. Because that's what's blessing them. And let me just say this and we're going to move on. But Andre, because you've touched on most of it anyway. But it's good to get exposure. A lot of us, a lot of groups are running around all over the country. They're just running around, running around, spinning their money, spinning their wheels, just running around. I just want you to elaborate a little bit on, it's good to get exposure, but is that such a thing as getting the right exposure? Or just getting exposure? I, I, I mean, the, the times and change, everything has changed so now, man, is when it comes down to exposure, you know, Brother Dennis, he basically said, and I'm learning that now, outside of the Williams Brothers as a solo artist because see, what y'all understand, everything I did for the last 18 years with the Williams Brothers, the wonderful harmonizers, the Bolton Brothers, my own family group, the Tate family, God's Shows family, don't amount to nothing now that I'm a solo artist. I gotta start over. I'm just telling y'all. So, when it comes down to relationships, man, if I wouldn't, if I didn't know people like uh, Pastor Davis is on, Mike, what? Uh, uh, bro, Cole, it'd be difficult to uh, do a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now. But what y'all don't understand in these alliances and stuff, you do you have people like Yolanda Adams that's included in it. Yes. Psh, yes. The Houston people, yeah, she's included in it. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, a lot of people, uh, Ray Beatty. There, there are people that you can make have a relationship to help you with the exposure, you know. But at the same time, to, to get the best, best exposure, study your craft, get good, get good at it, you know. And that way when you make a stand or you, you present your product, give the people something that they want to expose. Because you can't expose anything no more. Because people are very knowledgeable. And you can't get up in front of no legend and have caught, have doing what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Expecting for somebody to expose you. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Y'all keep saying that song, because I'm exposing. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Once again, he's kind of touching on the quality. I'm telling you. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell Unity to keep saying somebody's calling my name. I don't even hear it every time they hit the floor. Yes, yes, yes. You know why? Because the world loves the song. Yes, I'm, I'm yes. glad you said that, my husband. When you said something a few minutes ago, my husband reached up. He said, I'm going to tell him when I get back to that. The world loves the song. They had to be in Seguin. I know. But 
he 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 don't want to sing that song. Mm -mm. He like, you got that to song. no, you got to sing that song. The brothers don't want to sing. I'm just a no, but why? You got to sing it. It was one of the biggest hits. It's the, what the people want, not about what you want. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you for so that. On that note, on that note of, of exposure, the key word is networking. And my job is to tell people, even though we have internet, all these tough sources to, to connect for jobs, still 80% of people get jobs through networking. That's true. It's still important to, to touch people. Okay? Mm -hmm. Secondly, exposure. Remember, you gotta know your craft. You gotta be prepared to avoid the Bashan Mitchell. It can happen to the son, it can happen to anybody. Exactly. But when you, you now really when you mess up, up, now when you mess up, even ourselves as pastors, we just, I was in a meeting. Anybody, we just can't come to church and say we're just going to preach to this audience. There's another audience that we're preaching to. So I just can't consider what's local. I got to consider also <laughs> what's outside the walls. So now when you get up, okay, your presentation matters, okay? Uh, matters, and I say this here, I want to say this, sometimes you have to dress up above yeah. the people. Dress up, stop dressing so much down, because now you see as professional, you're going beyond, you're going beyond these walls. So how we stand, how we present ourselves, we got to know that there's, there's another audience. And understand something, it was probably was nobody in that church that exposed Bashan, but people on the outside exposed him. So if you're good, you might not get nothing from that audience, but somebody on the outside audience will be the one that expose you and send you and make make that, that Willis video go viral. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not, now, you want to, now, I've been around for a little while, you know, some of y'all don't, you know, and I'm going to say something, you know. Before Bobby Jones came to Bryan, I met Bobby Jones at, uh, at, uh, in Tennessee at uh, the National Baptist Convention through Soul Lifters. Okay, so a lot of artists y'all seen, I got a chance to see them and sit down with some of them, Byron Cage, all those, before they came, became big. Go back to Kurt Franklin, because I met him with Larry. Mm -hmm. Kurt Franklin came to uh, Full Gospel, yeah. and I was able to sit on stage with him because of Larry Davies. Mm -hmm. You understand? The, the exposure is so important. You got to understand something. Go back somewhere. I'm going to say this here. Integrity. Integrity. At the end of the day, it's not integrity. It's also what people see you do, but also what people can, don't see you doing. At the end of the day, because at the end of the day, it's gonna it's gonna tell if you practice, you take care of yourself, and you're preparing. It's gonna show. So I always say this here, and I'm, you know, too many people around here. You know, this, this room should have been filled. That's it. Yes. Number one, because we have somebody national here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, right. You understand? Yeah. We, 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 have, we have great. They could have chose to do anything else. All these people in this family, they had other things yeah. to do. But I've seen people in this city be only, only what statewide and never reach that next level. Mm -hmm. Because get, remember, they always, they could not do what it took I actually tell people, come, I'll pay your way to Full Gospel. They had, Full Gospel first started, had a midnight musical. I told the group, I'll pay your way to come and get on stage. You can be exposed. And they felt like they, they didn't need it. Guess who was hosting the midnight musical? BB, uh, CC Winans, Vicky Winans. It, it needed exposure. But they rejected it. And there are people rejecting Gloria, but it's bigger than Gloria. It's bigger than that. It's right. 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 It's and so these new, these new millennials, who, you know, who, who don't want to respect legacy, on, respect the trailblazers, and then they, you'll never get anywhere. Come on, come on, See, man. Touch touch day, touch Mr. Michael, the key to, to any uh, organization is still the baby boomers. That's it. Amen. 
What's holding churches together, what's holding this industry together, is those baby, right baby. now who God still have on the scene. That's right. Amen. Okay, the point. I'm going to say this. Mr. Walker took, uh, took over. We were in a meeting. And um, one of the bishops say, Mr. Walker, we're going to show, look, we're gonna show you, Walker, who got your back. As long as we're here, you're going to be able to be successful. I want everybody over 50 years old to stand up. Stand up. In a house of 2,000 people, 1,200 people stood up who were 50 years and older. And all the people who had already invested and gone before. Young people, remember, you're in, because somebody that's already went before you. And we swing on the heels of their sweat. I sound like, that sound like that, uh, like you should <laughs> On their tall, you understand me? And we got to respect legacy. Yes, sir. And we got to honor those who honor and do. Yes. And so we've got to say something. We can't commit to, 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 to disregard what God has given us. So that's my little spiel. That was good. Uh, that's my seven minutes. That was good. Can I say, uh, I'll just say something. Uh, Pastor brought it up. And I just want to read a little nugget that I had wrote before I came here. Is that uh, we have to learn how to sing everyday life music. The music Williams Brothers, Endurance, and all those brought up is uh, timeless music. It's music for back then and music for today. Amen. But then is we have to come out of the four walls. Gospel is suffering today because of the mindset of those that administer. We have to come out. And exposure, you got to, if um, Salvation Army giving out coats, Go down there, they got something going on. Go down there and help them give out coats. Yes. All right. A grocery store opening yes. or whatever. You you can be exposed and get exposure by doing things. You got to invest in yourself. And you have to be prepared. And um, do y'all remember the John Walsh degree, the Franklin funeral? When Melvin was singing, mm -hmm. they wouldn't let go of that song. Mm -hmm. He had to come back out two and three times. Mm -hmm. Because those are the songs that's going to keep us. That's it. That's it. Those are the songs that's going to keep us. And when you go out to minister, you've got to have it look at your audience first. Mm -hmm. If you get someplace and all it is is 60 70, 80 year old, you can't do hip hop. <laughs> and he don't. You can't do hip hop. And I had some uh, people to come and I'm like, oh God, I don't have no young people here. And it was a hip hop. He struck out with, a, not Amazing Grace, but he struck out with a hymn and just cleaned the whole place out. And he had come there to do that. He had come for hip hop. You got to be prepared. And like Gloria say, if you got a favorite song you want to sing and they don't want to hear it, don't sing it. I'm a radio promoter and I have to tell all of my artists, you got to sing your promo song. You got to sing it. But if you get there and you see and you feel that promo ain't going to work, you better do what's best. But you got to invest and do some things for free. Yes. All right. Do some things for free. If Pastor Johnny call you, we having a benefit service or a tour drive. Your first, well, you you got some money. You got some money, and then, and I, I don't want to touch on none, but you got to get some musicians that have a ministry. You got to get some musicians that have a ministry because I always say to the ones in Chicago, well, when does your ministry stop? You always ask, well, is it going to pay how much for the gig? No, no. I have a choir in Chicago, had it for 10 years. And my musicians, I get them straight from the beginning. Now look, when we go out, if we get some money, I'll share it with you. But if we don't, you ain't getting nothing. And I've had those musicians for 10 years. Never 
ask me for anything, but because they know I'm gonna be honest and I'm gonna be fair with them. When Christmas come, I take care of them for Christmas. When their birthday come, I take care of them for birthday. When you take care of your people, they will take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Real quick, real quick, what was saying about I think Drake take turns on it too. Um, one thing, this is just a little something you might want to do. If you're going into a city and you've not been there before, find out what they plan of you. Right. Because that way, you know what to sing. You know, if you got something spinning that's real hot, a particular song real hot, then you know you, when you go into that city, you got to sing that song. You may sing some other stuff, but you got to sing the song that are playing in the city that you're going in. That's very, very important. All right. That was good. Uh, I, let me just throw this out before we move it on quickly. Uh, we've talked about, I think the pastor mentioned about, uh, you know, some of these that's out of the industry. One thing I have learned from my personal experience, uh, from being out in the industry, those that have made it, those that are successful, uh, they are already on the next level. Like Brother Andre, I've noticed that the Bible don't lie. He said, if you stay humble, I will exalt you in your due season. And these that have been exalted in their season are humble vessels. We are trying to get there. You can't get there with no big head and arrogance. You got to stay humble. You got to stay humble. Then God will exalt you in due season. And I have to say that because everybody that I know that, that is there, they're humble. They're humble, y'all. If you get among them, they're humble. You know, I saw John P. Key the first time I met him. It was at the Bobby Jones, and I went up to him. I was so excited. And I was just excited. I said, oh, oh, just let me just touch your hand, shake your hand. I said, because I'm so glad to see you, to meet you, find in person. And he said, oh, uh, girl, you know, he was like, where are you going with it, you know? I'm just nobody. But to me, you know, it, it was exciting to see John B. Key. Right. But he, he was humble about it. And, you know, he hugged me and he said, I said, well, they love you in my town. He said, well, thank you, thank you. But he was, uh, everybody, Bobby Jones, like the most humble man that you ever want to meet. Everybody. I introduced uh, Kurt Franklin. This is before he got really, really big. It was a Texas Awards. It wasn't in yours, before yours in Houston. And I introduced him. And I'm like above there. But you know, we try to be professional, you know. So I had this thing to introduce the male vocalist of the year. And I'm like, uh, male vocalist of the year, Kurt Franklin. You know, and all of this. And then I went, that's a good thing. Amen. I, I didn't even know him at that time. And it wasn't just like after that, he just, you know, all of a sudden, you know, everything was Kurt Franklin. But at that time, I didn't know it. So, you know, it can happen, you know, overnight sometimes, you know, uh, it was already happening. I just didn't know it. Amen. <laughs> I just want to say that, you know. Stay humble, y'all. Stay humble. Uh, and I want to punch it, okay. Being a gospel rapper, uh, and of course, I know it's a little bit more difficult uh, for you than it is for some artists because, and like Ben has touched on, a lot of times, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. I know you especially. I'll be trying to get you to go ahead and do it, and you like, no, uh-uh. Because you don't build the audience, and you know, but well, it's not time. But that's why I'll be trying to take you payday, though. Because payday will work anyway. <laughs> Amen. But, but, but we just want you, uh, you've done a whole lot. You, you've uh, uh, international travels, and you are like our new um, hip-hop coordinator, GMWA. You won awards, the Texas Musical Awards after awards. You've done so much in uh, your career, made so many accomplishments. But in recent uh, years or so, you decided to go back to school. And, and can you just tell us why you made that decision to go back to school after all you've accomplished? Uh, I just made up in my mind. First of all, my daughter, I have a three-year-old daughter now, Journey, so she kind of just gave me motivation to go to further, go further in what I was doing. So I've, I've always had a business mind of always trying to figure out business. And, but I know in order to go to a level that, uh, that I want to go, that I need to go, that I wanted to get that education. I wanted to get that extra education. I, yes, I've learned from here, I've learned from there, of experience, but sometimes it takes that paper. So 
That's Sometimes true. it takes that. It takes those credentials, and uh, I wanted to do that. I pushed it out for years, for years, but uh, I got to give a shout out to my wife. She's, she's not here. She's at her grandmother's. She, uh, I always told her, yeah, I'm going to go to business, school for business. I told her this for about five years. Then one day she called me, she said, hey, you still want to go to uh, school for business? I said, yeah, I still want to go. She said, okay, um, well, the uh, instructors, the academic instructor is going to call you at 2 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I said oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So they called me at 2 o'clock, and about 4.30, I was... Enrolled. <laughs> I was enrolled and school was going in next month. So, so now I'm in my third year and uh praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right. Amen. Sometimes it's good to get those credentials, amen. Good to get that paper. People will respect you sometimes a little bit more if you have those credentials. Uh, Let me say something as a student of this alliance and my first year was last year with our convention. Dre was there, uh, Brother Jones, and the Representative Keaton session with him. And I sang a song, and I got through it a little bit, and I think Dre said, go ahead. No, he said, Brian Jackson. And I said, well, and he told me to respect Mahalia Jackson. I can't hear the Mahalia Jackson in my voice, but people hear it everywhere I sing. This alliance has taught me to invest in myself. Yeah. Yeah. I have been investing in myself through this alliance. I went to Atlanta. I sang. My, my group told me, don't sing that slow song. Sing. Uh, and so I sang the song that they sang on stage, and people were clapping and going on. I said, all right, I'm learning. <laughs> but when I've gone and I sound like Mahalia Jackson, somebody, I think Brother Jones, referred me to Brother Michael. And I, I had three engagements in December, exposing myself. The Christmas in the park, uh, you had the Mahalia Jackson, the legend. And I, I got a hit from that, someone, that I think the person that was videoing, there's something in March, he said, I'll make sure that you get in on that. So I have been, I love this alliance to you all, it works. The convention works. When they tell us work, I am a student, I'm still learning. Yeah. Dre, I can start as a little bitty boy. I started at 70. 70 oh. years old. And look at God. Yeah. I tell you, I am, I am the happiest person. Because seriously, seriously, you all, it works. And I have wanted to pay for uh, men of purpose, the whole group to come here. They won't, you know, I'm not a rich person, but I've offered to pay for different groups to come to this convention and sit down and listen. You'll learn something. Because you sing doesn't mean you know it all. And I know nothing. Now I know a lot because of you all. I do, and I'm still learning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, as she was speaking, something, something came in my mind that reminded me of it. Um, it was a few years back. Uh, a lot of things were going great for me. Um, I had one of them a ton of showcases, ton of shows, and, and my music was going great. I, I did a national tour that I pretty much did off of people calling me because they liked a certain CD. And a lot of things were going great. I had won all of the talent shows where I was from, Texas, I won from College Station Hip Hop, and a lot of things, I was winning a lot of things, and I had won a concert in, in Austin uh, to go to LA, BT uh, Music Matters. I was ready. I, I thought I was ready. I was ready in Texas, right? So I went to LA, and um, it was ten of us. So you know, I had my mind, okay, as long as I do me, I'll be okay. Uh, I had never went up first in the talent show. I'm always in the back, so I can see what's going on, or at the end, so I know what to do. But when we got out this morning, we the backstage, they said, "You going first, So I'm like, I'm first. So I didn't know what was going on, what to expect. So I just want to encourage artists out there, anybody out there, to be prepared. Because I know we said quality, uh, know what you're singing, but be prepared. If you have to switch it up at that moment, it's better to be prepared to not be prepared. prepared. In LA, I wasn't prepared. I don't know if anybody, if you guys know a guy named Major. He's a new artist. I think he's nominated for a Grammy. 
Yeah, major. Major. He's something with the uh, youth group, every rights group. Okay. Well, he's, you know, he's doing real big things now. He was in that showcase, and he won first. And now he's, I think he has one video with 70 million streams. That's the one he's Grammy nominated for. And I wasn't ready that day. I believe uh, Minister Cole, he had spoken on life music. And at this particular event, I had certain songs. I had my T.D. Jakes songs, and they were working in Texas. I had a, another one that was working in Texas, but when I got there, it seemed like everybody, nobody was doing... I, I went church to church that day. Nothing wrong with that, because God was red, you know, he was lifted. But I went church to church, and everybody else had life music that day. It was different in California. And when he spoke on life music, it kind of runs yeah. there. Yeah. And, and life music is not only for the four walls, but it can speak to someone who's just out there. I wasn't prepared with that. I went with the church and they were just kind of like, you know. But in Texas, I always, you know, but it, I, it took me to another world and I wasn't prepared. It still kind of bothers me this, to this day. I went all the way to LA because, you know, if I would have been prepared, if I would have let God use me, how, you know, hey, I could be that major guy nominated for that Grammy, yes. you know, but uh, I just want to tell you guys to just be prepared and uh, go out and do the rest. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good because uh, you do have to be prepared and there is times for different songs. Some songs might work, you know, and some songs don't. Yes, we told it, especially if you're on a, a big uh, concert, a, a big concert and there's 15 artists on that concert and half of the people don't went to sleep. You know, they don't let them sleep. They're tired and they're sleeping. The conventions, you go all day and you go all night. So sometimes people are a little sleepy. So we have to be careful. You can't get up there and sing something that's going to finish them off. <laughs> no. If they sleep, you might have to try to wake them up. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we have to, we, song selection, selection here is very important. So let's be aware of that. And uh, we uh, congratulate you, Punching, for you know, going back to school yeah. and for getting your education and, and going a little further. It'll take you further. Yeah. Uh, so we thank God for that. And I was just trying to say, media, he's really good with uh, media because we know media is very important today. And we've spoken on that several times about media. And uh, Punching is very, very, uh, he, he knows media. Amen. Just share a little bit so we can move on. We have uh, Robinson and Sister Brenda that's sitting up here patiently. Uh, we want to talk about uh, CDs and amount, you know, radio. But uh, uh, just share with us uh, just a little bit uh, about the technical, uh, you know, because we have uh, that social media. And you can tell us a little bit about what's available, you know, that can help the artists with social media. Well, we all know it's a different ball game now, and uh, a lot of it is social media, and like you say, it's not really the physical hard copies anymore. Everything is more digital. Uh, but just to uh, give you guys some education on social media that can help you, uh, I know, it, and give you an example of this rapper I know. He, um, it was him and another guy in a group, and a guy named KB went on to sign with Reach Records, which is the Cradle. And KB went on to go high heights, I believe he may have with stellar awards, won a few or anything. But the guy that he left, uh, he just stayed where he was. And uh, they kind of, uh, he was mad at first. He was like, oh man, you left me. You left me, but like me and the pastor was speaking, maybe it's not your time. But if you be, if you, be, you know, in God, your time will come. Well, I watched him go from posting a video to get 50 views to now every video he posts gets no less than 20 million views. And he hadn't signed with Lecrae. Now he's getting more views than KB who signed with Lecrae. Wow. Amen? But one thing that I've watched him over the years, and this has only been about one or two years, he knows how to present himself on social media. And on his videos, one thing he does is, you know the memes, memes, whatever they're called, they're popular now. People like watching look at that memes. Well, he does, he puts his video up, but he just doesn't put a video up and say, hey, check out our video. He puts his video up and it has a block on it, the block song that he says, hey, look at this guy, he, he mixed hip hop with country. Wow, you should, this is a must see. And it attracts the eyes. 
And he's done that, he was consistent with that. And he's done that about five months later, now his videos are getting 20 million plus views. So it's just a strategy. Yeah. One thing I tell a lot of people, I don't know it all, but I know people love creativeness. Right. You're creative, because nobody wants, it's 20 rappers in the room. If every rapper rap the same, no one sticks out. So what are you gonna do to make your brand the one that sticks out? What are you gonna do to make your market, your, make yourself more marketable than the next person? And that's all about, that comes back to being yourself. And being yourself and being creative and just letting God do the rest. Um, as far as social media, there's so many outlets. I've learned a lot through the Gills and uh, the Excellence Awards. I've learned a lot in those panels just being out there when all the other rappers were in their room or wherever they were, I, were in, I was in there learning. Hmm. And from that, I learned how to get my barcode sound scan. I learned the sound exchange. I learned Nelson sound scan. I learned how to put my stuff on iTunes, Pandora. Hmm. And that's all because I was sitting out there listening. And uh, so you're at the right place. And uh, I just always encourage, I try to encourage, there's no rappers in here, but I try to encourage them to. There is. Oh yeah. Oh, and she's good too. She's good too. You keep it up. Like she's really good. She produces her own music. Yes. She sings. She raps. So we gotta do a song together. By the way. I'm down. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. All right. Well, we thank you so much, Punchin, for that. We thank you because uh, I, I will say this: uh, when we go to the GMWA, uh, all of that to our board meetings, and we go to music awards. All of them have workshops. Every one of them have workshops. And I remember when Sister Angela, because we pretty, pretty soon we we're going to be doing a big Texas uh, Alliance uh, conference for all of us that's in Texas. And they were talking about, because they haven't been out here, some of them like I have, and like some of us have. Because uh, I've attended uh, quartet workshops in Alabama, and I've gone to Jackson, Mississippi, and I've gone every year to the Pastor Davies. I've gone to all over the state of Texas to the conventions, and I've learned a lot. And uh, they were just talking about education. And it was talking in a way like, we're going to do something different. We're going to educate the people, because they haven't been educated. And like I, I said to them, uh, the, the, it has been there for the people. These workshops have been here for the people. The people won't come and hear it. We cannot, we can put it out there, but we cannot force people to come. What can you do? We have put this really out there for several months. And I mean, everybody shared, and everybody, we have been talking about this and talking about this. And as they said, the house should have been full. There's a lot of gospel artists in this area, everywhere. And some of them, I know some is going to funerals today. Sister Lady Latrice and the Willis family has to be in uh, Seguin, I believe. No, Alloway. Alloway. And Unity too, though. No. Uh, Seguin. Seguin, okay. So some of them have to go. But some of, some of these artists are not going anywhere. They're just at home somewhere. And they're not being educated. And so, so what we're saying is that we need to, we need, uh, and let me say this, the, the GMWA workshop, for example, this is just kind of like the basics. We're asking a basic question that some of you may need to know, and we feel like it starts here. It starts here. Uh, so when you go out there, you'll be a little bit better prepared. Because when you, when, when you go out there, they have lawyers. I mean, it just don't be, you know, just the basics, uh, tax, you know, you know, so for you to your taxes and all, you know, you you know you'll be if you don't get the basics, you won't want to know what's going on. So when you go to GMWA, I mean, they have uh, the really the the education, the real education, take okay, education. Amen. But we wanted you to hear the basics of what you know. Maybe some of you asked, or some of you might want to just know what's going on in the industry. Why are we going to GMWA? We're not just going up there just to be spinning our wheels and take us a vacation. We're going to learn. It's very important that we learn. Sister Brenda, we, uh, because they're leaving now, we want you to just elaborate a little bit on radio announcers uh, because we have, a lot of people have lost the value of the importance of the gospel radio announcer. And we're still important. We're still very valuable to the gospel audience. 
Uh, it's hard for us to just elaborate a little bit now. It's hard for us to get CDs now or whatever. Yeah, talk about it. Yes, uh, it, is, um, it is changing. It is changing, but uh, we are very necessary. Uh, we encourage the audience, uh, the artists to reach out to us, uh, get your music to us, uh, MP3. Some people still send CDs. You know, just reach out to us, your event that you're having. We're great on promoting your upcoming event. Uh, we MC, we speak, we do all of that. So we are a perfect part of your ministry. We are the ones that's gonna get it out there. We're the ones that's gonna put it on the air. We're the ones that people are gonna call and say, you know, First Lady of Gospel Radio, uh, Minister Brenda, who was that? Uh, where can I get that CD? Do you have their number? I have an upcoming event. So please don't ever exclude your radio angels because we are vital to what you do because a lot of it comes through us. When I'm on the air, a lot of people call me and say, do you know what artists I can get to come to this event? So it's, it's, it's crucial. It's, it's very crucial and pertinent. Very much. And uh, but, but what we do, when we go out now, uh, I find that uh, Pastor Jones and all of us that have CDs, a lot of, but what I find that the new artists that's coming on now, because uh, there was a time, I believe, they, they used to pay radio announcers to play. But now it is what I'm finding is that uh, when we go out and group sing and all over the and you go and you ask for a CD, they look at you like you know you're foreign. Yes. Are you are you for real? You know they're standing up there like, uh, well, where is your money? <laughs> but can you explain that? Why I mean, why is it important for for us to receive a CD? I mean, yeah, for exposure for the artist. Uh, we're the ones that's going to get you on that next level. We have your music, we're going to expose you. How are you going to get it out? How are you going to get it out unless you have a million views on YouTube or the social media? So we are the ones that's going to put it out there for you. I MC a lot, a whole lot, and that's how I get a lot of CDs. And if I'm just sitting in the audience and if I would go and say, well, I'm with this station, I have to pull out a business card. I know to pull out my business card before I go back there. Because like Ms. Gloria said, they will just look at you and like, uh, that's going to be $15 or that's going to be $20. You know, so it, it's, it, it's important. So we're going to put you out there and help you get to that next level. And, and let me say this uh, as a radio 